Hello, Shalagatos. Ooh, hola, Shalagatos, Shalagatoritos. I am in Mexico, honey, and I'm here by myself, and I'm having a wonderful time. And I'm going to do a video for you now about how to travel on your own. Should I do it in this accent? No, it's probably offensive. Did you come here to cancel me because I can't do a Spanish accent all that well? That's okay. Do your worst. Let's talk about traveling alone. Now, I've done a video on this. It's been like over a year. I'd say a year and a half. Yeah, because it was when I went to Paris last spring and I did a video on solo travel. But you know what? It bears repeating because this is a very different kind of trip. I have never come on like a beachy trip by myself. So my Paris trip that I went on, um, I, had, I had to be in New York two, two consecutive weekends. And by the time I flew back to Montana, I would have been home for like 24 hours, the way the flights work. And I'm like, Fuck it, I'll take myself to Europe. It's faster and more efficient for me to go to Paris for four and a half days than to try to schlep back to Bozeman. So that's what I did. And I had an amazing, it, I actually am not a huge fan of Paris until that trip. And because I got to experience it the way I wanted to at my own pace, and I could spend 30 minutes in the Louvre, I could spend five hours in the Louvre. I could go to dinner at 10 p.m. I could not have dinner at all. I could do exactly what I wanted to do. I really fell in love with the town and I planned the Shalligator trip that we went on this April. So I really credit my alone time for being the thing that made me love it. And I might have even said in that video, that it's great to travel by yourself to a big city because there's like something to do. You know, you can, there's tons of activity. And I might have even said, I don't know that I would go to a beach resort though. I don't think I could do that. You know, I think I would get really lonely. I think people would look at me weird and I'm pretty alpha and I really, I'm in like the one percentile or the 99th percentile. I don't know how those things are. You know what I mean? Of people who just don't give a fuck what other people have to say about them. Like there's something inside me. My therapist might call it um, sociopathy. It doesn't matter. There's something inside me that's just like, I don't fucking care. Oh, if you have a problem, you're right. You have a problem. I don't have a problem. You got a problem. Sounds like a personal. And yet here I am in Mexico on a solo beach vacation, a dragon I never thought I would slay. Why am I doing it? Is it actually fun? Does it kind of, is it kind of shitty? Is everything I thought was gonna be bad about this, actually bad, or is it totally different? We're gonna talk about it all. I'm gonna to talk to you today, most importantly, about how to be safe when you're traveling alone. And not just logistical safety, because that's there's things that you legitimately should be concerned about. But we're gonna talk about something I did a little reel on, on my Instagram, about the fear brain, right? Our inner critic, Crystal, who is here to be shitty to us. But wait. Is she? How do we dismantle this person? And, but when should we also listen to her? We're gonna break it all down. Let me tell you guys about the Chalantourage. You know, I bring it up all the time. Listen, are you thinking about traveling solo because maybe you don't have a lot of friends? I got you. The Chalantourage is your place for friends. It is our little corner of the internet. You get five bonus videos from me a week. I've done like a whole bunch of videos. I do a whole bunch of story times, give you advice, Evil Monday, <laughs> Slutty Saturday. And like I said, it's a place to go to make friends. There's about four or 500 shalligators in there. There's like 12 group chats. Everyone's connecting, people meet up. So if you're a little lonely and if you don't really know how to make friends where you're at, or maybe you just moved and you don't have your base of people or you have a group of friends, but you're like, I just don't feel like these people understand me anymore. You're gonna find people who do in the Chalantrash. It's a really wonderful, incredibly supportive community. We're swapping legal advice and beauty advice and tons of dating advice that I'm sharing all my bumble horror stories on there. So go ahead and join, click down below. You deserve a community, girl, okay? And we've made one for you. All you gotta do is show up. You don't even have to bring a casserole or anything. It's fine, no, you don't have to bring wine. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's talk solo travel. First thing you gotta do is get your mind right, okay? I'm gonna talk to you about the logistics in the second half of this video. First of all, you gotta get in the headspace to wanna do this because I think as a woman, and listen, we're pack animals, we are. We love a girl gang, a clique, and I do too. And I'm not saying that solo travel is the end all be all and that it's the only way you should travel, not at all. I love a girl's trip, I love a family trip, I love a boyfriend trip. But I think you need to round that out with traveling by yourself. You don't have to go for two weeks. You don't have to go take yourself to dinner on Valentine's Day, if, I mean, if you want to. 
But I think there is so much you can gain and learn from being alone a little bit. And you're probably thinking, I'm alone already. I'm alone already all the time. Join the Shalantrash, you won't be alone for very long. But it's different when you travel because travel is about discovery and curiosity. And it's also about healthy boredom, at least the vacation that I'm on now. And I'll tell you in a minute why I decided to do this. I'm getting ahead of myself. What solo travel also very frequently circles back to is fear. Solo anything circles back to fear. And maybe the concept of going to like Paris or Mexico or even the town you know, two towns over from you is like, ah, that's a bridge too far. Okay. Can you conceptualize having dinner by yourself? Can you go to Chili's by yourself? You're like, no, no, I can't. I can't go to the movies by myself. No, I feel weird. People look at me weird. Hold on a minute. Hold on. Okay. We've got two brains, two voices inside of us. We have our intuition voice, our authenticity voice, our correct vibration voice. Mine sounds like Michelle Obama. Maybe yours sounds like, I don't know, somebody else, me. <laughs> and it sounds like not always you. And then we have our fear voice, right? And there's parts of these voices that overlap. Your healthy intuition voice has some things in common with your fear voice in that both of them want to keep you your best self. Now, your, your intuition voice is going to guide you towards the right things. Here's the right career. Here's the right man. Here's the right friendship. Here's the right style of mom jeans, right? Your fear voice is guiding you away from bad things. She's not telling you what to run towards necessarily. She's telling you what to run away from. Don't get on an elevator with that guy. That girl does not have your back. Those red flags are actually huge. They need to be deal breakers. All right. But the way she disseminates this information, is not always very helpful because she doesn't sound like just Michelle Obama talking about things you should avoid. No, no, no. She sounds like Crystal. Crystal, she's from a truck stop. Smells like beef jerky. Hey, you guys got any cigs? You got any scratchers? <sighs> Crystal's a piece of shit. She's a bag of trash. And that is who my inner critic is. And I encourage you to name your inner critic. Now, a shalligator named Anna Lacomi. I don't know if you guys follow her on Instagram. L-A-K-O-M-Y, Anna Lacomi. She's the best. She's one of my good friends. She was a shalligator. She came on a trip to the Dominican, the first one I ever did. And she is a career coach and she specializes in first generation girls. So if your parents are immigrants and you've like never navigated, you know, the corporate world, or even if you're not first generation and you like me, are a nerd with a perfectionist, more than just a streak, an ocean of perfectionism, and you burn out, she can help you. And she does all these free workshops, so check her out. But we did a live on my Instagram, and she was talking about naming your inner critic, right? And I was like, oh, it's Crystal! And I think it's very important to get some sort of composite sketch of who this person is. And <laughs> this is such a bitchy move. But when I'm like out and about in Montana, and there's I mean, it's a small country town, so there's a healthy degree of trashy people. I observe them and I'm like, okay, what does that tattoo say? Daddy's girl, okay. What is that bracelet made of? Pop top. <laughs> okay, I really absorb these people so that when I'm hearing that inner voice and it's crystal, you're gonna look stupid if you go to Mexico. You know what everybody's gonna think? You know what they're gonna say? Look at that fucking loser. She ain't got no friends. <sighs> She's single and you are single, ain't you? That's why you don't have nobody here because nobody likes you because you're gonna die alone and it's gonna be like two weeks before even, you know, people realize you're missing by then you'll be half eaten by wolves. I don't know how the wolves are gonna get in, God damn it, but they will. You know what? They fucking will, Shallon. You mark my word. And it's all gonna start with you trying to go to Mexico because you're a loser. That's what she's saying to me, the wolves and everything. But when I can touch back to one of these trash people that I see and I can just get some sort of like visual on her, I'm like, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? If that person walked up to me in real life, first of all, I wouldn't let her within 10 feet of me if she's smoking a cigarette. I'd be like, shut the fuck up, shut up. Why are you, look at yourself and you're trying to tell me how to live? Shut up, what are you talking about? Get out of here, Crystal. I wouldn't listen to her. But she's happening in my mind, and I do. Let me put this into perspective for you, okay? 
most people, they have this set of excuses for why they can't try something new, why they can't branch out of their comfort zone, they can't go for that promotion, they can't leave their husband, whatever. Oh, I just don't have, you know, the degree that I need to go for that promotion. <laughs> We're staying together for the kids. <laughs> so Jackson. Most people never leave there. 99.999% of people, they stay right there. And they have those excuses and they have that tape loop and that's where they live, okay? That's not us. That's not us. We are strong enough to go a layer deeper and be like, I'm afraid to go for that promotion because I don't have that degree that they want or the experience. And I'm afraid I'm not gonna get it and I'm gonna feel stupid. I'm afraid to leave my boyfriend. And I know he's bad and I know this isn't good for the kids, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid to try CrossFit, I'm afraid. Okay, hold on. That's great that we can go there. That's amazing that we can go to that level. What if there was another level? What if there was another level? And in this level, we not just say, I'm afraid, but we shift it into an imaginary friend. Did you ever have an imaginary friend growing up? I didn't, um, not really. My dog was my, I forced her to be my friend. But if you did have an imaginary friend, I'm gonna guess they were actually your friend and they weren't constantly berating you and holding you back from things and terrorizing you. I guess they were your friend and you played tea party and they lived in the oven and whatever, right? What is your crystal? She's an imaginary friend, but a shitty one. She's a shitty imaginary friend. So imagine for a second that instead of, Instead of, you know, coming up with this laundry list of bullshit, why you can't do something. Imagine even throwing out, being honest, I'm afraid to go for that. I'm afraid to leave. I don't know what to do. Imagine if you had to tell it like it actually is happening. And you're like, oh, so I have this imaginary friend. Her name is Crystal. She is awful to me. She's literally the worst. She's so mean. And she was smoking a cigarette uh, the other day in Walmart. And she's like, hey, you, hey, you don't go for that promotion. And I, I mean, I have to listen to her. She's She's my imaginary friend. Uh, she doesn't live in the oven, she lives in the basement. And I just, you know, she's right, so I have to listen to her. You would be institutionalized. They would put you in an institution. They would, and they should, because it's insane. And yet, that is exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. You aren't putting those, that language to it, but is that not exactly what's happening? Oh, I really wanna to go to Paris, but none of my friends can go, but I've got this time off work and I've got all these miles. Crystal won't let me. Oh, who's Crystal? Is that, is that your mom? No, no, it's my um, imaginary friend who makes me afraid of things. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna go someplace you are not, so goodbye. That is what's going on though, girl. And what if you could say that as plainly? And you know what would happen? Crystal wouldn't have that power over you anymore. You'd be like, what the f I sound insane. I'm not not going to Paris because my imaginary lot lizard truck stop prostitute doesn't want me to. Hold on now. Hold on now. Remember when we said that the fear brain and the intuition brain are kind of, they have some overlap and that the Michelle Obama brain is guiding you towards something and the crystal brain is trying to, keep you away from something. All right. Okay. Anna pointed this out when we did the live and she's like, your inner critic is also sometimes trying to protect you from something. Now I'm going to piggyback onto that and add what she is trying to protect you from might not be real though. And we have to be brave enough to ask Crystal these questions. Crystal, no, don't shoplift that. Don't, you don't, don't shoplift the nail polish. Put it, put it down, put it down. When you're telling me not to go to Paris, why? Well, you're gonna look stupid. Is that really all? Well, and I know you, you're trying to save and pay off that credit card, so I just, I just don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> give me that, give me that uh, nail polish. I want it. I'm gonna pay for it. I'm just holding it until I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna set it in my purse because I don't have the hands. I don't, I have to hold it in my purse. Okay, hold on. Maybe we discovered something. What is your fear brain? Is, is there actually a legitimate thing under there? Maybe, maybe not. But I've gotten good enough at walking with Crystal through Walmart and trying to get her to stop shoplifting and asking her what's under there. Is there something she's actually trying to protect me from? 
And again, maybe this is real and maybe it's imagined. And maybe when it comes to solo travel, it's like, well, she's trying to protect me from things that I don't even know. Like, hey, I don't want to get trafficked. I don't want to get my wallet stolen. I don't want to get like drugged at a bar. Okay. All right. Okay. That is sort of healthy fear. But again, we need to pull back and like, all right, if these are really the fears, I don't want to get my wallet stolen. Is there, is there something I can do to protect myself against that? That is less extreme than, well, I'm not going to go at all. I'm not going at all. There's a fear that I might get lost. Okay, can I download the entire map of Paris on Google Maps? Oh, I can? Okay, then I'm probably not gonna get so lost and just fall off the edge of the world. Just because there's a kernel of like validity in there doesn't mean you have to like go full extreme crystal and just be like, well, then I'm not going. Then I'm not leaving him. Then I'm not trying for that promotion. Ah! You have to learn, again, we talk about this all the time, the middle path. Hmm, well, what is she asking? And how can I ameliorate that? Maybe I don't know off the top of my head. Can I Google it? Can I ask someone who's been to Paris alone? Can I ask someone who goes to Mexico a lot? Oh, okay. And if you keep going down this rabbit hole and you're like, actually, I don't know how I could ameliorate that. In the case of, for example, you're trying to pay off your credit card debt. Is it really a good idea to put another grand on there for a trip that maybe you don't need to take? Okay. There's not perhaps a workaround for that. So then maybe Crystal's onto something. And if you check in with Michelle Obama brain, she might be like, yeah, I don't think that that's a great idea. And feel what happens in your body. Are you like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's not a good idea. I want to go, but it's not a good idea. So how could I travel right where I'm at? Can I go to a new French restaurant by myself? Can I go to the library and read some books I would never normally read? Can I drive two towns over and go to the Applebee's there and sit alone at the bar? Travel's about curiosity and exploration, stepping outside your comfort zone. And that's great if you can do that in Malaysia. What if you can do it in your own town? I bet you can. I bet you could travel pretty close to home and kinda scratch that itch without getting a new passport. Are you trying that? But let's talk about, let's shift out of all this existential emotional stuff because now I feel like I've gotten you right in the headspace, okay? Let me tell you why I went to Mexico. Because like I said, this was something I never thought I would do or wanna do. It just seemed like I would get bored. And one of the main questions you guys asked me when I asked on my Instagram, like, what are your questions about solo travel? It's pretty much, how do you deal with the emotions of it? What if I get anxious? What if I get really sad <sighs> that I'm here by myself? <laughs> and I'm here by myself because Tom and I are over and I had invited him and he's like, I'll go. And I'm like, will you? <laughs> Okay. And he never followed up on it. And then we got in a huge fight. And I was like, well, I'm, I mean, I'm going anyway. I wasn't planning this around you anyhow. I'm getting a little in the weeds. If you guys want the full story, Jordan, the Shell Entourage, I'm like talking about it and crying about it constantly. But he's finally, he's finally out of my system. It's like, the question was, what if I'm sad here? Girl, you're sad at home. right? You're sad at home. I guarantee you that you're driving to Dairy Queen for a blizzard at 10 30 PM that you don't need because you never need a blizzard. And you're like, fuck, I wish I had a boyfriend. Fuck. Damn it. Andrew, I missed that. Oh, I miss him. What do you do? Do you just careen the car off the road? Do you quit your job? Do you live in the basement for three months? No, you deal with it. You already have the tools to deal with whatever feelings are going to come up on vacation. You're using them now. And you might say, yeah, but they're going to be so much more pronounced and over the top on vacation. Here's something that my therapist says to me all the time. He's like, you know, your feelings won't actually kill you. Do you know that? Your central nervous system might be telling you right now that's going to kill you. He's like, it won't. And he's right. That's kind of the worst part. Like, no, no, I know this won't kill me. I will go on living and go on feeling this way. But you don't. You don't feel these pervasive feelings of pure misery 24 hours a day. If you do, you need to see a therapist, right? I mean, then traveling isn't going to whatever. That's a whole separate video. My point is, yeah, you might feel some things, but what if you're supposed to feel them? What if that's the point? What if that's the point? 
I came out here to feel things, to like feel things, but yet not feel things. I came out here to get good and bored. I brought a book. Yes, remember those books? I've written two of them myself, it's crazy. I brought a book and I lay like a fat lizard on a lounge all day and I nurse one mojito all day. I keep filling it with soda water. He's like, no rum. I was like, just the soda water. And I get bored and I let ideas bubble up and I let feelings bubble up. And I look at the clouds drifting across the sky in the Sea of Cortez and I view my feelings as those clouds. Here they are. They're coming across, they're casting a shadow, but I know they're not gonna park there forever. Well, they're gone. I let things wash over me. I don't try to anesthetize myself. I need more coffee, I need a drink, I need to do this other project, I have to get in the car, I can deal with this. I just let my psyche be heard. And that's all she really wants. She just wants to talk, she just wants to be heard. It doesn't mean you have to obey everything she says. But I think, you know, we talk about the psyche all the time. She'll do it the easy way or the hard way. The easy way is, girl, take yourself someplace for a night. Even if it's a hotel room, two towns over, and just, just be. Even if it's not a hotel room, turn your phone off, put it in the freezer or whatever, I don't know. Just be for a little while. Just be. Just be. That's the easy way. She's going to whisper to you, she's going to talk to you, and you're going to be like, I know. <laughs> I have to leave it. <laughs> oh, God, I know. Or you could shut her out and she's going to knock a little and then she's going to knock a lot and then she's going to kick that motherfucking door down and it's going to look like you getting really, really sick. It's going to look like you gaining a lot of weight. You panic shopping constantly on Amazon. You picking fights with people you care about. You fucking four guys in a weekend. It's not going to look great. Okay. We know, we know this. Why? We look at an alcoholic and they've got some trauma in their past and instead of dealing with it, they just add in alcohol. How well does that work? Poorly. Because now, not only do they have the trauma, they've got this whole other secondary problem on top of it that they're trying to address. And I always watch intervention. I'm like, damn, you could have just gone to therapy? Like, you could have just tried to iron out whatever was wrong with you and just look at it? That was, no, we just never, okay. How different are we? What's our alcohol? What is our emotional vice and drink of choice? I know we talk about solo travel and we don't think it's so deep, but it is because we as a society, we're terrified to be alone. We're terrified to be disconnected. We are terrified thinking people are looking at us and judging us. I've got news for you. You wouldn't care so much what people think about you if you knew how seldom they did. So what is this trip actually like for me? Did all of my bad fears come true? I'm actually not thinking about Tom at all. I mean, and when I do, it's a cloud in the sky. I'm like, huh. But I have the clarity now that I'm like, if he were here, he would be a nightmare. Because he's a nightmare where we live. So are people looking at me weird? Uh, you know what? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Here's, here's the Uno reverse on that. They're the losers, not me. If they are triggered by a hot, sexy piece of ass like me, having dinner by myself. Oh, Joyce. Oh, Dennis. That's really bizarre. Why do you care? Why does this trigger you so bad? Why do you even notice? Oh, I know. Because the things you hate in others are the things you hate in yourself. You hate my independence because you don't have any of your own. Because the concept of you even going and getting a coffee on Sunday morning and reading the paper alone in quiet repose wouldn't happen. Nope, not happening. I'm looking at fucking Crystal. I'm looking at you, bitch. I'm enjoying my papaya and my iced latte and I'm thriving. I'm having a great time. And your problem, again, that is your problem. How incredibly weird. And yet the people who are nice to me are other alphas. Alpha males, alpha females. They're like, you're here alone? Really? Oh my God. That sounds amazing. No one's bothering you? I'm like, not a single person. They're like, oh. <laughs> did you hear that? She's by herself. Fuck, this is incredible. 
Those are people who run their own business. Those are people who work out. Those are people whose lives I look at and be like, you're living right. The people who are like, meh, giving me the stink eye, like this side stink eye, I don't blame you for not liking me. I wouldn't like me either. I wouldn't like women like me either who really got it all going on. And the last brick in that wall of a hot, successful, confident bitch is I don't need your approval. Because who are you? Who are you? You're a nobody. You're a nobody. I'm not going to see you again. I don't care. So I'm proud of myself that I took myself on this vacation. It was really nice. I mean, I'm here for two nights, three days. I'm proud of myself. Is it the best vacation I've ever been on? No. But did I get appropriately bored and relaxed? Yes. I'm very, I'm very pleased with that. So let's talk about actual logistics of solo travel. How do you feel safe? All right. Here are my two main tips. Number one, go someplace you speak the language. I would not solo travel. I mean, I could name all the countries. It's better name the places I would go. <laughs> I speak English, French, and Italian. So I go to those places alone. I feel very comfortable by myself. I also, I'm, oh, and I went to Germany by myself for like two nights after I was in Monaco and all that. That was great. I speak a little bit of German, like I'm mostly the dirty things because my ex was German. <laughs> so, hey, there's a market for that. But typically, I wouldn't go someplace where I really have no hope of getting around. Now, Mexico at an all-inclusive resort, everyone speaks English. I speak just enough Spanish so I can kind of muddle through if I want to. But like, I, everybody speaks English, so this is fine. I wouldn't freestyle around Mexico. I wouldn't freestyle around Russia, around Asia. I know a lot of people do that. They backpack through Asia. That's great. That's not what I would do. And I truly don't recommend that for women. Go someplace where you can speak the language. And again, start two towns over. Fly to Texas for the weekend. Go to Maine. Start small. Don't start in Singapore. Don't start in Russia. Start a little bit smaller. Number two biggest tip, stay sober. Please don't go to foreign countries and try to buy drugs. I can't even believe I need to say this. Don't bring drugs and don't buy drugs, okay? Maybe don't even do them. Anything that is impairing your judgment and you don't know where it came from, right? Like what is hash? I don't know. But like when I was in Italy one time with my friend, like in college, they're like, let's smoke hash. I was like, what even is that? And they're like, um, it's this resin. I'm like, huh? Like motor oil? I, I don't smoke anything. So I, I opted out of that. But we met a very sketchy drug dealer in a very sketchy part of town and he pulled it out of his mouth. It was wrapped up in his mouth. Girl, girl, no. Don't do drugs, okay? Don't get blacked out. Have a cocktail, sure, or two, or maybe even three throughout the day. If you're impairing your judgment, a target is now on your forehead. No bad person is gonna target a sober person over a drunk one. They're always gonna go for the drunk. Also, don't advertise to everyone caught standing still that you're by yourself. Be very judicious about who you tell. I don't tell like the staff. I don't make a big show of it. My boyfriend's asleep in the room. Oh, my boyfriend's joining tomorrow. Make up what you do for a living. Say you're a cop. I don't know. I, mean, I know that that's like stolen valor. But listen, in the interest of safety, what do you do for a living? I'm a police officer. Or I'm in the police academy. I'm a jujitsu master trainer. I'm a UFC fighter. It's a lot more menacing than I'm a, I'm, I'm wax bikinis. Nothing wrong with that, but who would you bet on in a fight? And again, predators look for weaknesses. They look for the lowest possible resistance, the path of least resistance, right? Someone who's wasted, who is not in control of their faculties, who's super emotional and who's super scared. I just really don't like being alone. Like, I don't even know why I'm here. Baby girl, come with me. I'm going to introduce you to all these people. Don't leave premises. Don't get in cars and go to places you don't know. Hey, let's take an Uber if we go someplace. You know, don't strand yourself. Make sure your phone works. I can't tell you how many people I've traveled with. And this, this is something we had to start like insisting upon in the Shalligator trips. I'm like, no one's swapping SIM cards. We're not trekking all over to get a card that we're, you need to call your cell phone provider and make sure your phone is going to work in this country. Don't assume it will, but... Your phone needs to work. 
Your credit cards need to work. You need to have cash because sometimes you got to get out of a sticky situation. Ain't nobody taking cards. Like I was at one time I was in, I think France, we were at a farmer's market in a small town. She's like, nobody takes credit cards here. I'm like, they're peasants. This is like Belle's Village from Beauty and the Beast. Why don't you have cash? We spent the whole fucking afternoon trying to get her cash. It drove me crazy. Be prepared, right? Be a little bit prepared. Stay sober. Also, keep your dick in your pants. Keep your dick in your pants, man. Don't line up Tinder dates. And if you do, the last thing you want to say is, oh, I'm only here for a night. Oh, so nobody knows where you are? And you're by yourself and you're trying to get laid? Hmm. The conclusions they're going to draw is, I mean, I can do whatever I want to this girl. At the very least, she's kind of a slut, so who cares? I'm not saying that this is right, but this is going to be the conclusion that's drawn. There's plenty of time to go out and meet people. And it, it, I know it sounds romantic. And I, I was by myself and it was this like whole adventure and uh, we met this guy. If that happens, great. I wouldn't necessarily go looking for it. Hold on though, hold on. If you are a very experienced solo travel traveler or just a traveler in general, sure, maybe. If this is your sort of first way to dip your toe into this, do not do that. Do not do that. Do you even know how to call 911 in a foreign country? Because it's not 911 all around the world. Do you know that? If someone roughed you up, where do you go? Do you know how to get a taxi late at night? Are there taxis? Are there Ubers where you're going to be? If you got to escape, how are you going to do that? Don't get on someone's moped. Don't get on a fucking Vespa literally anywhere in the world. Four wheels or no wheels, okay? Four wheels or no wheels. Don't take the subway late at night and try to learn the subway system. Take an Uber, okay? So much of dangerous situations come down to drugs and alcohol, horniness, which I think circles back to, I don't want to be by myself and I need a man around me at all times, and cheapness. There are places to cut corners and there are places to spend and your safety, which to me equates to transportation, is not one of them. It's not one of them. You're not riding the city bus around Moscow. I've got news for you. We're not on my watch, no. The next question is about accommodations. Where do you stay by yourself? Listen, I don't do Airbnbs. I don't do Airbnbs. Once in a blue moon, if it's like a girl's trip, we're going to Napa and we're getting a big old Airbnb. That's one thing. I stay in a hotel where there are security cameras, where people are going to lose their job if they start acting up, where there is protocol. I usually don't stay in tiny little boutique hotels. I stay in a Hilton, a Marriott, where there's a corporate structure, right? Not like Bob's bungalow on the outskirts of Mexico. Nope. Nope. I read reviews. You can search the word solo in reviews on TripAdvisor and booking.com and you know, all those little sites. See what solo travelers have to say. I don't, to the surprise of few, I never have in my life, nor will I ever stay in a hostel. Not ever. Not ever. I don't need bed bugs. I've gotten them once in Belize. I am all stocked up for the rest of my life. Okay, thank you. Some people have an amazing experience in a hostel. If you have down below and if you have safety, safe hostel travel tips, let me know. Because listen, there's a lot of solo travelers who come through there. Great. This is not my vibe. <laughs> this is not my vibe. I'm a luxury bougie traveler. I would rather not go someplace at all than, or honestly, I historically would go into debt to travel the way I wanted to versus staying at a hostel where I just didn't feel okay and I didn't feel safe and I didn't have a good time. I've never done it, but I know that that's what it would be. That's just, this is just me. And to me, this is best practices. But no, I don't fuck with an Airbnb. Not at all. There's very little government oversight. One person has a key to your house. They know you're there by yourself. Uh, I'm not saying a hotel is a fortress, but I think uh, there's just more people here, you know? And if you're screaming, maybe someone's going to hear you. It's not normal to scream at a hotel. So that's just, that's my thing. Did I mention don't get wasted? Did I mention that? If you want to get wasted, sit your ass in your room all night. Sit your ass in your room all night. Have a cocktail dinner, buy a bottle of wine, come back to your room, sit on the porch. You don't leave. Don't interact with other people. Don't bring people over to your place. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let people know where you are. Share your location. Share your itinerary. Text people. Okay, let's stop talking about safety because it's a downer. Here's something more fun. How do you take pictures of yourself on vacation? So I'm really, I think that this has been a very successful trip to Mexico because it truly has been a vacation. Some trips are just that, they're trips. And some things are vacations. And this was a vacation for me because I wasn't trying to do content. I mean, I'm doing this, which, yeah, 
it'd be nice if I didn't have to, but of course I'm gonna film more I'm here. I can't abandon you guys. But I wasn't planning all these outfits and looks and looking up the location. Da, 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 da. I was like, nope. But when I travel, like when I've gone to Paris or London, I will hire photographers off Airbnb experience. I won't stay in an Airbnb, but their experiences section is really cool. Like when I was in Germany, I did a little bike tour that I hired off of there. I love the historical tours. That's also another great way to meet people or just be around people and just chat. Oh, you guys are from Texas. That's so cool. Da, da, da. You can just chitty chat for an hour or two on the tour. And you're like, oh, this is, I'm getting some, some people-ness, right? I'm not just totally alone. Hey, do you guys wanna grab a sausage after this? I'm just gonna go get a drink and da, da, da. Maybe you meet people, that's fine. And I know I spent half this video talking about like, don't, don't, don't. But the whole point of travel is to be open-minded to new experiences, to new people, new places. You just have to be smart about it. And start, again, start small. If you can go to the next state over and practice doing this, okay, you're gonna work your way up to Germany or Japan or whatever it is. So I really like Airbnb experiences. There's usually photographers in all, literally every city you go to. You can hire a photographer and I do a little shoot. I really love photo shoots. It's how I experience where I'm at. Some people, they love to go to the local winery or the local cathedral, which I love to, you know, or do a history tour. For me, a big thing is, is the, is the photos, you know, I get, I'm like, okay, what outfit's going to go really well. And then I, you know, I have my historical caption. So then I get to learn about stuff. So that's really fun for me. And it's usually really affordable and they get you, your pictures back right away. It's great. Other than that, bring a tripod, bring a selfie stick, ask people to take a picture for you. Ask millennials or Gen Z. Don't ask a boomer. Speaking of boomers, speaking of boomers, listen, if you want to find a trustworthy group of people. This is not an official scientific study. Look for people in their, people over 40 who are talking about a college football team. <laughs> I'm just, this is my unofficial, don't quote me on this selection. They're like, are you a Buckeye? No way, we're Vols. Oh my God, I'll see you in the SEC finals. How's that quarterback? If, I don't know why, but if they're, Fat Southern Americans talking about college football, they're generally pretty safe. And if they've got the cups, it's like Bob and Sue's 25th anniversary. I think you'll be pretty good. They're not trying to traffic you, okay? They're just fat Americans on vacation. Again, pretty trustworthy. If they're like, if they're guys who dance at clubs, like, and they stand and they like bop on one leg to EDM, do not trust those people. Again, not a scientific study. Don't chisel it into a stone tablet. This is just what I have found. All right, what's next? How do you plan an itinerary? This is a big question. Because a lot of you guys are like, I don't know how to hit everything that I want to hit. Hold on, hold on. Travel is about exploring, especially when you're by yourself. And like I said, I didn't like Paris until I went alone because I could just kind of doodle around. I would pick a destination, like a museum or whatever. And I would make sure it was like a mile or two or something, you know, it was, a distance away and I would doodle my way there. I'm like, listen, it's 8 a.m. I'm trying to get there by noon. I'm gonna like doodly bop here. Oh, is that a pastry store? I better eat a pastry. I better eat this, pa I better eat all the pastries. And I just kind of worm my way there. I look at my phone, like look at the directions every so often. I stop in here, I stop in there. And that's my eventual destination. So that I get my doodle around time, which is truly when traveling is so amazing, when you stumble upon something, that's when you, those are the memories. Or you strike up a conversation with an old lady on a bench. You're like, ah, oh, she was the architect of this building. And you just have those great experiences. Yeah, you want to see the major stuff because then if you don't, it's like, did I even go there? I didn't even see the Eiffel Tower. Did I really go to Paris? But you got to temper it with the doodling around. I will tell you who has a pretty good travel guide is Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's, I know, her website, but they have good travel guides. If you want like one fancy bougie dinner, and this is whether you're traveling alone or with other people, I always look on Goop because they have, it's like the hot spot. It's what's beautiful. You know, they're so aesthetic because of course, so I like that. But that's a pretty good sort of guide. I will always try to do one local like kebab stand or like a crepe stand or like a little hole in the wall, something, 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 and at least one fancy pants place where I am getting the best foie gras, the best local Indian cuisine, whatever it is. 
So again, you're clicking the big, ticking the big boxes, but you're also allotting for that doodle around time. And you know what, girl? Nobody is like grading this paper. Oh, I see we didn't go to the Jardin de Tuileries, huh? Oh, that's, that's no good. And oh, what's this I see? Oh, didn't go all the way up to the Eiffel Tower. Well, 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 Mackenzie. You're not allowed to travel anymore. Who is this? Who is this? Is this Crystal? Is Crystal saying this? Fucker. Fucker. Do whatever you want to do. Do what you want to do. And that's why it's kind of cool to travel alone someplace you might have already been. If you've been to New York, go back. I mean, maybe not New York at this point, but you know. Go someplace and, and do those weird little niche things. Go to the chocolate museum. Go to the artisanal farm and pet some goats. I don't know. Try it. And look on Airbnb to see what the experiences are. Again, they have a lot of like tours, like history tours. They have pub crawls. If you really do want to like go out and have a little nightlife, I get that. Do a group pub crawl. It's a little bit safer. You're going to meet some other people. You're not drinking by yourself, which again, predators are going to pick up on that. Oh, there's a girl sitting there just slugging back beer by herself. That's not good. I'm going to, I'm going to buy her a shot, two shots in. She's fucking game over. I got her. You don't want that. If they see you in a group, you are much harder to penetrate, much harder. So give that a shot. I think that's just about all of my tips because this video is getting a little long, but let me wrap it up by circling back. Fuck what anyone else has to say. Who are these people? Do you even care about their opinion? And if the answer is yes, I do. Listen, girl, the main issue might be that you care about everyone's opinion. It's not this person, this person. You're just localizing on them as the Greek chorus, the car of people who judge. It might be that you care overall what people think too much. And if you pull back, that's probably not encapsulated just to travel. Are you in a job you don't like? Do you live someplace you really wish you could get out of? Are you living for other people across the board? Why? What is Crystal telling you? Is there a degree of healthy insulation? Hey, you need to stay at this, you need to stay at this job you don't like because you can't just keep hopping around. You're never gonna climb up that ladder, find a job you do like. If you just keep jumping ship after three months, y'all need to stay there for a year. Okay, that's kind of valid. That's maybe kind of valid. But stay there for a year, make a plan, make that exit plan. Be like, thanks, Crystal. Thanks for the tip. I'm not going to take it all the way. Be like, you got to die in that job like you're a Japanese businessman in the 80s. You're never quitting Toyota. You don't need to do that. You can take a little of what you're saying. You're like, all right, you just go take the nail polish you want. Just go take the nail polish. And then make your exit plan. Traveling alone is about realizing that you have power. Realizing that you get to exist in a vacuum, not just in a vacuum, you exist and your needs and your wants exist. Even if no one is there to be like, I love that you're doing this. Fuck them. That's great. I mean, we all love the praise. I love it, but I'm not going to live and die by that. Confidence is not, I know they're going to love me and approve of this. Confidence is I'm fine. If they don't great, if they do, I'm fine. If they don't, because I approve. But if you've never dipped your toe into this concept of approving of yourself, First and foremost, you don't even know what it feels like. So take yourself to Chili's today. Take yourself to Chili's. Maybe it's not going to feel like, <gasps> wow, <laughs> feel incredible. Bottomless jalapeno popper. Maybe it's not going to feel like that, but you know what it won't feel like? You're dying. I guarantee you it's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill you. These emotions aren't going to kill you. And so you're going to start there and be like, I didn't love it. I didn't love eating jalapeno poppers by myself. I would have rather my best friend been there, but hold on. Did it kill me? No. Did the whole bar turn around or like loser? No, they didn't. Actually, that guy was chatting me up. He was, that was nice. That was nice. I'm not into him, but it was nice. Hmm. So then that foreign film I really want to see that no one gets to see. I, I mean, I can do that. That probably won't kill me either. And I actually might like that better because it's more up my alley. Maybe I'll go to the dinosaur museum this weekend. I know none of my friends want to go, but I could go. What if you could start building on this? Remember, your first solo outing, it's just where you're starting. Just where you're starting. Where did you start eating? It was breast milk. Are you still there? No. Is it the best food you've ever had? I, no. Right? It's just where you started. You're like, cool, thanks for the breast milk. I'm moving on up. 
Cool, thanks for the bottomless jalapeno poppers. I'm moving on up. I'm heading to Paris. Let me know what you guys think about solo travel. Um, what do you guys said this on my Instagram? You're like, you know, since COVID, I've just been taking more chances. And I'm like, you know what? I think that was a huge shift in my life too, because we realized that all these things that we, that were just assumed and given hugging your friend, going to target were suddenly in question. There was a question mark over everything. Don't get me started on it, but baby, we got to live. We got to live while we can. There's aliens, you guys. There's aliens. There's aliens now. We got to get out there and live without waiting for someone's permission because who's? Who's? Why have we elected them our emotional parole officer that they grant us a day pass? That's ridiculous. Take back your power. It's fun. And any bad emotions that come up, again, I promise you, they're not going to kill you. Okay. Let me know what you guys think about solo travel. Tell me what other questions you have. We can, we can keep doing videos on this. I love it. And we've got, let's see, Kylie content, Lizzo content, Barbie content. When I put this up, I'm not sure if I'll have already done the Barbie video. Hopefully I will have, but if not, it's coming soon. I love you guys. I'll see you later, alligators.